on the air episode 111. Sunny San Diego, California. On the airs on the air, aka the Little Tommy Show. Right. Returns for another week. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. We got a huge show, from what I understand. Lots of announcements to make. And of course, the Sully Man. Hey, before. Well done. Nice to see you guys, by the way. Well done, Sully Man. Once again. Speaking. Speaking of the Sully Band, yes. I, I've been waiting a couple of hours to say this. Okay. The Sully Band, in my opinion, got robbed with the wow. San Diego Music Awards. San oh, Diego Music in the last two years? Well, yeah, I, I was watching the nominations online and oh, I was waiting 2020, to hear you. those were waiting. the days. Let me bring you back to a gentler time. <laughs> the year was 2020. By the way, this isn't even the real San Diego Music Award, is it, Steve? You made this one, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't give you the wrong impression. We actually won. No, we yeah. did win. Is they don't look as cool as us, so. But I believe you yeah, guys. Yeah, this is going to go really far in getting us win been, winning this year. You guys should have been in more categories than the one. What did we get? I think you were up for best Latin country disco. <laughs> Thanks to Nacho, who's not here today. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly. That's right. Yeah. Boogie! Yeah. All right. Good. All right. But I'll bring. Well, yeah. Up. I think we got. So we are. Not, we're nominated. Mary, do you have a microphone over there? What? So what are we? What did we get nominated for? Best R and B. Wow. Album. Al album. Yes. Blues and R and B. Wow. That's good. I like that. Speak it well. Thank you. I don't know what to say about that. I think that's. I think. I think. I think it's great. Uh, you think we got robbed somehow? Yes, I think you should have been in more categories. Oh, more categories. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe you have some. Uh, I mean, you got the. You're the one with the Rolodex. Why don't you oh. make it move? You're the Hall of 20, Fame radio guy. 2024. Can I talk about real musicians while I'm here? Please. <laughs> wow. Do you guys remember the the remember the years of boy bands? You know. Right. Right. Yeah, in the, tell me why, right? <laughs> the best boy band I think there ever was, there uh, ever were, uh -uh. there ever was, was uh, a band called All Star Weekend. Do you remember All Star Weekend? Yeah. They ripped. Absolutely. Yeah, do you know who's here today? Cameron Quissing from All Star Weekend. Look at him right back there. <laughs> he still looks like he's a Disney character, doesn't he? <laughs> but wait a minute, who is that next to him? Is that, uh, is that the lead singer of Echo Smith who has 3.3 million monthly listeners? Wow. Multi-platinum recording artist, Sydney. Look, oh, there's Echo Smith. Let me see. Wow. Uh, look at Cool Kids has 491 million listens. How does that feel? Because we have, I think, at least 16 on our last album. So that's what. <laughs> don't pull up the Sully Band one yet. There's our manager, Rick DeVoe, right there. He's changing all that for us. So. Wow. But uh, congratulations, guys. You did a fantastic job. Congratulations to our first guest who yeah. helped us with us. So very, very exciting. So do you want to get started? Yeah, let's started? bring out our first guest. Yeah, here we go. Because... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's a new venue in town. From the sound, Grammy Award winner, Chris Goldsmith. There we go. To see you. Chris Goldsmith, of course, president of Belly Up Entertainment, my producer of the Sully know. Band. Do you need one of these? Uh, I can, would you sign it I can autograph it for you. Thanks, yeah, Very good. But wait a minute. This is the album that got robbed? It hasn't been <laughs> robbed yet. It got nominated. It was nominated. Well, we got robbed of a Grammy. If you can well, oh, go. It got, yes, it did get robbed of a Grammy. San Diego Music Awards, I, I'm going to say it again. You should have been in more uh, categories. More categories. Well, you know. We're I, just happy to be nominated, I've right, learned, Chris? learned to yeah. say that. What is that? What do, you, what do you have with the best? Oh, there we go. Best R&B funk or soul album. The Sully Band, let's straighten it out. Uh, there we go. Chris, oh, Chris, yeah. Chris Goldsmith was a producer. So very good. So maybe we get some more hardware. Hey, and that was a but band. wait a second. That was Hold on, band. though. But you have produced a lot of bands. And you have how many Grammys? 
I have uh, seven Grammys. Can you believe that? Wow. Seven Grammy Awards as a producer. Doesn't seem real. Ben Harper? Ben Harper. Blind uh, Boys of Alabama? Alabama. Yeah. Charlie Musselwhite. Wow. Yeah. So did you go up on stage and say, Mom? Uh, the, the, the first time that, that the Blind Boys won, which was the first Grammy that I was a part of, uh, I did go up on stage. Awesome. Yeah. What in was that after, like? In the afternoon. Though. What was that like, though? Uh, it was surreal. It yeah. was crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've been to Chris's house. Close He's close got them all lined up like chorus girls up at the top of his bookshelf there. <laughs> I would have them. I mean, I would bring them with me. Yeah. I ever get a Grammy. I'm, it's, like I'm, it's like They're I'm very carrying, heavy. I'm, I carry that around a lot. People see the, that on my dashboard. I don't have the guns like right. you do. Yeah, you well, can yeah. carry them. I can't carry them. The, um, um, but congratulations on this and congratulations on all your success. But, but hold on a second. Congratulations on all the success of the new venue here in town yeah, yeah. called The Sound. So. Yeah. The Belly Up, of course, is a is a is a heritage brand here in San Diego. For some of, the, I mean, even the Rolling Stones have played there. Jimmy Buffett has played there. Um, of course, it's our sort of our home court, but it's such a great venue um, uh, here in San Diego. Paul it's McCartney one, ever play? No, not yet. Right. We're working on that. When but he now does, you, you will text me. Yeah. But now you have at the at the fairgrounds. Yes. There is this this unbelievable venue, and it reminds me of a giant Roxy. Mm -hmm. It reminds me a little bit of 4th and B downtown, mm -hmm. but it's so well done and all brand new and brand spanking, all the best technology. It's called The Sound. The Sound. Talk about it. Yeah, um, it's just a brand new rock concert venue in San Diego. It's a yeah. venue that San Diego's needed for 20 years and hasn't had. Um, which is a 2,000 capacity room. And that's the difference between, well, there's a number of differences, but that's one of the big differences because Belly Up holds around six, 700 people. 600. 600, and this is now 2,000. 2,000 folks. Yeah, and there really isn't another venue like it built sort of from the ground. I mean, it's in an existing building, but it was completely gutted and just con designed specifically to put Where, on rock shows. What existing building? So it's the old uh, Surfside Race Place, which is uh, on the east side of the fairgrounds property. So for years it laid, uh, empty because uh, off-track betting is now online. So it's near where you bet? Yeah, well, it's near where the off-track betting facility used to be okay. back when there was 2,000, 3,000 people going to do off-track betting. Got it. Now they just do it on their computers. So Got it was it. down to just that one guy that had like still had AOL and a phone <laughs> and like couldn't get the... Couldn't get it on his computer, so he would go down there and make the bet. The online betting windows are now the bar. Just like at 4th yeah. and B, the bar was the vault. Yeah. No, but you guys did great. It's not just the venue because the sound's unbelievable. And I, I, was, I was fortunate enough to go see the sound check and mm -hmm. the opening night and all that stuff. But it's not just that. You guys have created a new club there. Yeah. And it's it's there's it's I don't think there's anything like this in San Diego. In fact, I don't even think there's anything like this in LA. So, what are you most excited about with this thing? Is it about the people that you're coming in because you had Ziggy Marley as an opening act? We had two nights of Ziggy Marley sold out, and it was just it was great. It was like a homecoming. It was yeah. just so great to see everybody there. The sound was great. Our staff is great. Um, you know, it's it was really a celebration. You know, yeah. and uh, we've got Flaming Lips coming up. Uh, we've got this band, Big Gigantic, coming. Yachtly um, Crew. Yachtly Crew has already sold. Out. I mean, the, yeah. the appetite is is. I'm telling you guys, we need to be a Michael McDonald cover band. Listen, baby. I'm telling you, we'll get we'll be booked every night. We'll be us and Yachtly Crew in the same set. Yachtly Crew's been in this studio before. Too. Oh yeah, yeah. very good. Um, uh, for you, will Belly Up still be um, uh, the same venue that we can see great local music as well as some of our favorites like Big Head Todd and the Monsters and Cowboy Mouth yeah. and some of those favorites? Is that ever, is anything going to change there as a result? Nothing's going to change. Belly Up's going strong. We're having yeah. a, a great run right now. Yeah. Uh, coming out of the shutdown, picked right back up where we left off, and, and programming's going great. If anything, I feel like the sound will will help us. You know, yeah. as we talk with more people, we're just uh, more in the mix. Well, the other thing, too, is that you guys did a full remodel of Belly Up during COVID. We did. Um, brilliant, by the way. Thank you. It looked fantastic. And then, of course, the restaurant is, is used to be yes. called the Wild Note. It's now, now the, called Tavern. The tavern or Tavern, yeah. Tavern, which is unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, just another, so another couple of venues here. But listen, great to have my producer, my friend. All right. And of course, our mentor and the guy who gave us a shot in San Diego, Chris Goldsmith. So we have three more guests. All right. Let's bring out the next guest. He's truly a living legend, co-founder of the Challenge wow. Athletes Foundation, Mr. Bob Babbitt. Look at it. It's Saturday morning with Bob. How are you doing, It's almost buddy? like breakfast with Bob. Great to see you, pal. 
Brooks I, I asked I asked Mr. Babbitt if he can bring oh. in that trophy because I saw this online. He, this he, he did. did. This Bob was like Babbitt. a humanitarian international deal. Dude. Yes, he didn't win that in San Diego or L.A. or New York. Where did you win that award? It was in Nice, Nice, France. Wow. It's pretty fun. Well, so what? So this is the global. This means you're old, Sully. They give you a thing, you know, when you when you live long enough yeah. and you're involved in oh, is something. Oh, is this a lifetime achievement? It's a lifetime achievement. Oh, it's you're supposed sparkles. to go away. Yeah, yeah I see little like, sparkles on it. I can like see a, that. Like a eulogy. Yeah, that's it. Saying. Wow. <laughs> so is that where you want me but to set But you're still above ground. So when the time comes, that where you want me to set that? Just exactly. Right on top? Okay. You just All put right. that on top and it's like, yeah. But lifetime a, kudos contributor. That's a big deal. I mean, you were in France accepting that. Yes, I was. I mean, very fun. That's very cool. That's huge. Well, if you don't know Bob Babbitt, Bob Babbitt, of course, uh, started a number of things here, uh, here in San Diego, uh, namely uh, Competitor Magazine, which is yes. a which is an endurance sports magazine in San Diego. I think the best thing you ever created was the Muddy Buddy. Absolutely. Were you going to say the Muddy Buddy? Yeah. Muddy absolutely. Buddy was a run. Can you explain the Muddy Buddy? <laughs> because the Muddy Buddy was a run. Was like there a five k. Two people. It was a ten k, but two okay. people in a mountain bike, and you took turns. So if you and I were were partners, yeah, I start on a mountain bike and go about a mile. Okay. At the mile, I had a 25-foot inflatable with a cargo net up the front and a slide down the back. So you'd ride there, do the obstacle, start running. It's like a, leave it's your like bike. a Pendleton type obstacle. Yeah, yeah. Leave your yeah. bike. Your runner would run up, do the obstacle, grab the bike, and ride by you. So you'd leapfrog. Okay. You only ran and rode three miles each. Yeah. And then you wait for your buddy at the mud pit. You have to go to bud, through the mud pit together and then go to the beer garden. Any event that's got a mud pit. Exactly. I mean, let's face it. Yeah. Right? And because it was a leapfrog, I got to wear a frog outfit. So that was really fun. So you did this, and then you were also one of the original people that did the Ironman triathlon yeah. back in the day on a uh, Schwinn I, varsity, if I'm not mistaken. Much. Yeah, no, I had a pannier sleeping bag and tent on the bike because I thought you swam 2.4, rode 56, camped out, and rode back the next day. Did the marathon, a little bit of a surprise when they said, no, no, you do it all in one day. It's like that. And then, and then from there, you started <laughs> a number of events in San Diego. I know that you, you eventually... Uh, we're part of the Rock and Roll Marathon. Uh, we uh, bought, and when we had Competitor became, Competitor Magazine became the Competitor Group, and we bought the seven Rock and Roll, at that time, those seven Rock and Roll Marathons and seven Muddy Buddies and the four Women's Half Marathon Series events, plus Competitor Magazine, Triathlete Magazine, Velo News Magazine, Women's Run. So now you're magazine. just sitting on a lawn chair, huh, with all that success behind you? No, huh? Now we get to do Challenge Athletes Foundation. Which, by the way, everything led into that. Which you founded, along with well, Jeffrey, Jeffrey S. Powell, Powell, Rick Kozlowski. Rick Kozlowski. Yeah. But Challenge Athletes Foundation here, local, of course, we're big supporters. Huge I think supporters. Sponsors. I think we've, I've ridden that Challenge Athletes Foundation ride 12 years in a row. Exactly. That will be my last. I will never ride that ride again. What? No, I'll show up for the dinner. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'm not doing it again. And because you, Tommy's doing it. Yeah, well, Tommy can <laughs> do it. Yeah, we have, so many, we have so many questions for you, Bob, but I want to bring out yes. two more guests. Ah. All right. Let's bring out the next guest. She's a three-time Paralympic wow. swimmer and paraclimber. She represents South Gorilla? Africa. Gorilla? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Emily Gray. Is your walk-on song? Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I don't see the similarity, but that's okay. Yeah. I love the song. Uh, Look at that, three-time Paralympic swimmer. Yes, oh, that's a big deal. Nice. Three-time Paralympic swimmer, paraclimber. But what I love about it, when I read your website, motivational speaker. You yeah. inspire so many people. Can you tell us Thank about you. that when you speak to children? Yeah, I mean, so I had osteosarcoma when I was 11 years old, so it was quite an aggressive um, type of bone cancer. And at that stage, there was no social media, there was really, I didn't know anyone else who had even gone through any sort of amputation, never mind that specific type of cancer. So I really felt like a strong urge and sense of responsibility to make sure that I share my story with as many people as possible and really make sure that no one's alone in their situation and that there's always someone there who can relate to them. What, what part of Texas are you from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding. Where, yeah, what fine. a beautiful, what a beautiful, I mean, I, is it an accent, but that's from where? South, South Africa. Man, that's a, that's a. Did you think it was from England? Really? Honestly? No, because. What did I you know, think it was from? South Africa. No, but I know what you read. Because I read All her right. website. Let's see what happens. All right, <laughs> can I bring up something really quick about your award? You guys were part of a number, a, a number of awards. Um, we've had Emmy nominations regarding Challenge Athletes Foundation. Um, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, and Mary can help me out again here, 
Didn't we win a couple things last year uh, for, with Challenge Athletes Foundation? Yep. Two Anthem Awards. You got them right there. How you like wow. That? This is for the million. Is it for the million dollar challenge? Celebration of athletes, uh, celebration oh, of abilities, and, and, and celebration something. of abilities. Yeah, but yeah. what happens is, is we are your videographers. Yes, you that are. go on there, and, and we and we kind of, uh, we kind of, been latched onto your organization now for twelve years. Good but, storytelling. <laughs> but it is great storytelling. You yes. remember you shot the celebration of abilities here. Yeah, we did. And, and the Anthem Awards are part of the Webby Awards, uh, right, Mary? Purpose driven work. Right, and Webby is like the Oscar of the internet. Mm -hmm. It's like, in fact, it's like of all the internet, and I think we competed, we got nominated for a Webby last year, if I'm not mistaken, Mary, and we competed with Shaquille O'Neal um, and one of his, and we were right there, one and two, but yeah. we ended up winning, instead of a Webby, we had two Silver Anthem Awards, and this year, what do we do again for CAF? Uh, the MDC, the Million Dollar Challenge, yeah. we did a video recap of the whole week, Phenomenal. a promotional video, and it is it won a gold and a silver for in, uh, equity and inclusion at the Anthem Awards. So we just got Congratulations to CAF for that. Great. 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 Jared Coleman. Jared, Jared in the back there. Jared, I want you to, can you show back at the control room? Because Jared, that whole team, Michael Larson, Jared Coleman, Curtis Matovich, all those guys, those yeah, guys are the guys on the trip Absolutely. with us and yeah. th that says hi. He's the one who's uh, whispering in my ear, shut up, shut up, move on to the next one. <laughs> we have another challenge. After. Yes. And I, and I want to spend some time talking about what CAF does for the folks who don't know. Yeah. We'll do that after the break. But we let's, have let's many questions. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring out our next guest from USC by way of Temecula, California. My favorite quarterback and linebacker, Alex Ruiz. Oh, Alex Ruiz, of course. Uh, That's Alex. What a great story. We're going to hear his story completely uh, in a minute here. But I, I met Alex uh, on the last night of the Challenge Athletes Foundation Million Dollar Challenge last year. A, another keynote speaker who speaks yes. to folks about his journey. But uh, you talk about your talk about what happened to you as a high school kid. Yeah, um, that was a pretty big deal. Yeah. Well, first of all, talk talk about your challenge first of all, and then talk about what happened in high school. That was a pretty big deal. About had a big had a big piece of that. Yeah, I mean challenge. That's <laughs> had a lot of challenges, but yep. I mean majority of it. I was playing football my junior years. Now five years. That's, five yeah. years ago today or this year. Yeah. Um, in Temecula. In Temecula, yeah. So I was playing quarterback, playing linebacker, and it's so funny because I was only strictly quarterback, and then I entered my junior year, and I was like, let me yep. play linebacker. Like, I want to. Mm -hmm. So my coach was like, you're going to get hurt playing linebacker, and then ultimately I ended up getting hurt playing quarterback, and it was just a freak play, freak accident, like no malintent, nothing bad really happened on their end. It was just a normal tackle, and I ended up getting twisted up, dislocated my knee completely, so my tib fib and my femur completely came out of socket. Um, from a hyperextension, my cleat kind of just got caught in the grass, and then next thing I know, I'm laying on my back, and my right foot is touching my left shoulder, oh. and yeah. not really knowing what's going on, got taken to the hospital, spent six weeks there, and they saved my leg at the beginning, and then kind of told me a few months later that it's probably not going to come back, I had no motor function or anything like that, so had to make a decision. They're like, you can keep it, you can try, and I had a lot of friends, luckily I worked with the Wounded Warrior Foundation down at Temecula in mm -hmm. high school. Um, so I met a lot of wounded warriors that were missing limbs, and they'd come by and just kind of offer advice, offer life advice, and kind of point me in the right direction of like, look, we've been through that whole like trying to save it and working through it for years, and it's just not worth it because then you end up, you know, chopping it off anyways. You know, it's a bad way to put it, but uh, ultimately I, I kind of made the decision within like 12 hours of yeah. like probably the best idea. Add to that, Bob, because because you were the ones who brought uh, Alex to us originally. Well, and the, the reality was that the popliteal artery in the back of the knee had been compromised, and I think that maybe it was misdiagnosed at the beginning, and that led to you know, making the decision of you try to save it or not. Right. And what was fascinating to me was when I first heard about Alex, the he was pointed in the right direction because he ended up with Peter Harsh mm -hmm. as a prosthetist. And Peter Harsh makes he makes prosthetic legs. Yes. And there's a huge difference between a lot of the prosthetists who are out there work primarily with people who are older, who might have diabetes or trying to get from here to the bathroom and back, and someone who makes athletic legs. It's a they're, that's, they're the rock stars. Of, yeah, of this is not just a walking leg. This is so you can run and so exactly. on and so forth. Yeah, and I mean, my, my whole outlook of when it came to the decision process was not, you know, what's going to get me up going f the fastest, even though that was in the discussion. It was more of, you know, later down life. Like, what, am, what, is, what do I want my life to look like, yeah. you know, when I, when I have kids and I want to run around with them? Yeah. And, those are decisions that I'm just learning. At, uh, <laughs> the, well, you're, you're making those decisions when you're a teenager. Yeah, 16. Right? 
There's there's much more to this story. I want to talk about that. We're going to do that right when we get back. The name of the show is on the air. We're on the air. Sully Band's here. Chris Goldsmith, Bob Babbitt, Emily Gray, Alex Ruiz. Welcome to the Tommy Show. school dance team that my daughters dance on and also my friend here Tracy's daughter dances on and we won first place for that dance you saw we won a choreography award and first place at two local regional WCE dance competitions Whoa. so we're just bragging a little bit over here about our girls <laughs> bragging is good I have a question for Emily you know I've been studying and reading about you and can you take us to the time when you were 11 years old and what happened yeah, so, so like most 11-year-olds, I was a pretty active kid. I loved um, running and surfing and actually did a lot of netball. And for those of you who don't know, netball is just like a version of basketball in, in the Commonwealth netball. countries. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I played a lot of netball and I started to develop this aching pain in my left hip. And, you know, I went to therapists and, you know, we thought it was a muscular injury, so I had a lot of um, therapy for that, but it turned out it started swelling. And that's when I actually went to a chiropractor and he, and he suggested I get um, x-rays done. So as soon as they did the x-rays, it came back and they saw it was an osteosarcoma, which is the bone cancer. Um, I immediately went into chemotherapy that week, started an aggressive cycle of chemotherapy for about six months. Um, unfortunately, the cancer didn't seem to reduce at all. And I was ultimately faced with the decision of getting a hip replacement or getting the amputation. And at that... And you were 11. Yeah, I was at 11 at that time. And at that point, the chemo was so intense that it felt like that was killing me more than the actual cancer itself. You know, I weighed like... 50 pounds, it was just really skin and bones. The, my smell was super sensitive. I'd vomit at the, the smell of anything, really, even perfume, something good, I'd vomit. So. And then, 17 years later, what were you doing? Who were you representing? I was representing, well, even not even 17 years later, because I started swimming soon after that, and it was about four or five years later where I went wow. to my first World Champs represented wow. South Africa there. And then I realized, you know, something big could come from this. And then the Paralympic dream kind of evolved. And then when did you meet this young man, Bob Babbitt? I met Bob when I moved to America. So I moved to America in 2017. Um, and then I became more and more involved in CAF. I was really looking for a community that I could relate to. And I was in New York City at the time. And it's a pretty scary city to, <laughs> number one, have a disability, not to know anyone. It can be quite lonely. So, you know, CAF kind of pulled me in, and it was just like a family to them. I, so. I think it's time for you to talk about what CAF is, because I, I don't know if there's anybody in San Diego who doesn't, since we talk about it every five minutes here on the program. <laughs> um, but, it's, but it's worth talking about. But I think I, I, we should talk about the fact that, that um, if you were to lose a limb or if you were to find yourself in a wheelchair, um, the insurance companies will pay for you to be ambulatory. Right. They'll pay for you to, in other words, they'll pay for a walking leg or a standard wheelchair yep. and the like. Nothing to do with sport is covered. But athletics and sport are considered a luxury. Exactly. Luxury Even item. today. Yeah. When the incidence of childhood obesity with 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 kids with challenges is what up 30, 40 percent from Absolutely. from from 
yeah, general population numbers. Yeah, it's, and the insurance it, it, still thinks athletics and moving around is a luxury. Right, they'd rather put you on opioids than ha have you get out there and, and push out. So and CIF raises money for? We've raised $147 million Whew. in our, now we're in our 30th year, and we've sent out over 40,000 grants to keep challenged athletes in the game of life through sport in all 50 states of Puerto Rico, in, in 73 countries, oh. and more importantly, in 104 different sports. Here you got a football player, you've got a swimmer, you got oh. a climber. When we were in Colorado shooting with Emily, she was living with. Wait, Colorado shooting with Emily. That shooting sounds like with, a TV show. We're Let's shooting talk about that. Well, yeah, we will. Yeah. So we're shooting for the movie we did on Landis. We're shooting a little history of prosthetics, and so we had we went to shoot Rudy, who's a double above knee amputee, who right. was living with Emily, who's a single above knee amputee, okay. and their other roommate was Roderick, who's a double above knee amputee. And I'm like, wait a second, you got three athletes in one leg living in this house. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? And then while we're interviewing Rudy, his black Labrador is, keeps bumping into the couch. I'm like, Rudy, what's going on? You're like, oh, he's blind in one eye. Like, wait, wait. Got three athletes, one leg, and a blind dog. That's a Sully song. That's exactly that's right. right there. Chris, there. You right can, there. You can produce you that. Think? I've already Let's right produce that. Down. That's a right. Sully song right there. Um, how many sports? How many sports have you given girls? 104. 104. Any other Who knew sports? there were 104 different sports? Yeah. Every day, finding out new sports. Uh, obstacle course racing. Adap now, adaptive surfing here in San Diego. Adaptive, adaptive surfing. Snow skiing. Adaptive surfing is about to, well, we should find out soon, get into the Paralympic Games for 2028 in L.A. Oh, awesome. Since surfing got in for 2020, there's a good chance we're on the short list for 2028 for yeah. L.A. So there's, there's so many cool things happening. Everywhere. I got a question. Yes. Um, you being a quarterback and linebacker, did you, you watch the Super Bowl? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Worst halftime show Hold on. This is, this is an I important like question, and it I all like relates. Um, was that a holding call? Because I lost 100 bucks <laughs> with that free. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't it's, a holding call. They need to let people it's, just it's, play. It's a ticky-tacky call. Oh. By the book, yes, it's a holding call. What, what I think, book? I think in... Yeah, what book? book. Yes. Point. Just like in a Hail Mary. Were you rooting, you for, were you rooting for Casey? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. Good I think one. everybody in America, besides the people in Missouri and Kansas, were rooting for the Eagles. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yeah. No. All right. That, that, was a, that was a tough way to Lose. pave the way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, I mean, you got to look at it right now. Tom Brady's retiring. Who's the next second coming of Tom Brady? Patrick Mahomes. Dang it. Chris, did you watch the Super Bowl? I did. Did you watch halftime? I did. I want to hear oh, your yeah. opinion of the halftime show coming up because there is a sing there's a segment of the audience that thought it was the greatest thing in the world. And then there's not. Ah. Yeah, I had a hard time in the halftime show. More questions for Emily and everyone else right here. <laughs> Tommy just forgot the name of the guest. Chris Goldsmith. <laughs> Emily Gray, Alex Reed, Bob Babbitt. Welcome to the Tommy Show. It's the James man. Once again. Looks good up there with you in the middle. Maybe I'll start going off to the back there. No. Sounds better yes, with you up there. Yes, yes. All right. Once again, the Sully Band, in my opinion, got robbed. San Diego Music Award nominations just came out. But I, I truly... If we win, will we have gotten robbed? Yeah, I think you... <laughs> I, I Thanks, think, Tommy. I think you, des you guys... Well, Sully you. Band, which is my favorite band... Uh, you guys deserved a few more categories. Hey, Mary, how do people, um, don't, don't the, doesn't, don't fans and such have an opportunity to help us here? Yes, voting is now open. You can go to sandiegomusicawards.com. You can vote once a day from now until March 25th at 5 p.m. They cut off the voting. So vote for us once a day, every day until March 25th. Oh, yeah. But they can but vote online? They can online. vote, yes, yeah, voting will last Do you have any poll, Chris? I mean, you're, you know. Just, uh, you're gonna just call the guy quality. Up? All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, speaking of challenge, I'd pay athletes. for votes. Is there a way? Can we uh, can we rig this thing somehow? 
All right. Let's talk to me after. Would it kill the people from Echo Smith to maybe put the, post the album every time they play a concert or something? Would it, kill, would it kill some of the celebrities in here just to be walking around with Sully Man hats all the time? In fact, this is the new hat, by go. the way. How do you like that? I like it. Okay. Hey, speaking of CAF yes. and Team Chase and the Belly Up, what's happening on April 7th? So we have a we have a, a benefit concert for Challenge Athletes Foundation and Team Chase. Team Chase is a is is a is a organization that was I think I'm going to say founded by Bill Walton or supported by Bill Walton, yeah. um, uh, and and of course Lance Weir who's here about uh, a young man named Chase who's one of our uh, one of our own here with Challenge Athletes Foundation who 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 suffered a very rare form of um, multiple sclerosis. I can't remember the exact name of the what was it called, Mayor? Muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy. I beg your pardon. That's right. Uh, um, and, and the long story short is we're, you know, we're raising money again on April 7th at the Belly Up uh, for the happy hour show. So the best part about these, Bob, is that we start at 5.45 or so, 5.30, and we bird. end at 7.45. Early bird. Beautiful. And, you, and first of all, you're in the Belly Up, so it looks dark. You think you're out late, but it's like 8 o'clock when you walk out there. It's fantastic. It's my favorite show, so you get done. Uh, and, of course, this year... Um, we're, uh, we're uh, going to help out Team Chase and, of course, Challenge Athletes Foundation. But opening for the Sully Band is going to be the Aqua Dolls, which is a huge six. I would argue that we should... I would argue that we should be opening for the or that we should be opening for the Aqua Dolls because Aqua Dolls play with uh, with bands like Foo Fighters and uh, you're sharing the bill. We're sharing the bill okay. with the with the Aqua Dolls, so they'll be on stage with us. But it's a great cause, and of course, Sullivan will be here. And thanks for bringing that up. So you guys can have tickets. I'm sure, Mary, we'll do some sort of giveaway at some point. You think? Okay, we'll do some sort of a package where you get to hang out with Chris Goldsmith for the entire day, and uh, <laughs> and uh, do you ever get to see like I remember you invited me one time to go see Jimmy Buffett at the Belly Up, and there was like 20 people there. Yes. Maybe 40, that I don't during, know. During the, just coming out of the shutdown. Right, mm -hmm. and it was really, like it was just us and. Private concert, nice. You no, know, it was like right there, like there's Jimmy Buffett, yeah. right? And, um, but you have had a number of big, big names in there. Like when some guy in San Diego, in celebration of his wife's birthday or something, paid the Rolling Stones a million and a half bucks or whatever. The, I can't remember the number was in the news. I don't think anybody really knows. I but heard the Rolling million. But the Rolling Stones were at the belly up. They were. They what, weren't like, at the belly up. So did you, you, you had to have gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had to go, and I had to bring my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is still mad at me that I didn't bring her. Did, so how is it though? Like, did you meet Mick, him? Mick and Keith just like walking around? Um, they were around. I didn't really talk to them. They kept to themselves. We did set up a little jogging track yes. in the back for him. I heard about that. So exercise. talk about that because. Uh, privacy screened the whole alley behind the club and he was able to do his, his work out there because he can't just go jogging on the beach apparently. I don't know. <laughs> well, um, at the time I lived right above the belly up on the street right above and, and could look down and you could see because the way the Belly Up Tavern is, Belly Up Tavern is on Cedros. So right behind is the railroad tracks. And right behind that is 101. Yes. Everybody on 101 on the sidewalk yeah. had their up. faces against the chain link fence yeah. to try to see in there. Yep. And, um, and it, was, it was truly. It was uh, an event. It was definitely. Is that the biggest event. name that's played at the Belly Up? Today, um, is there any? Uh, is there a bigger? No, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, did, know, I mean, is you two Paul, stuck in there? Paul. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, um, Paul no, McCartney. We, we've had the Red Hot Chili Peppers played there. I was there. Um, Were you really? That was, that was a great I'm show. I'm get the nod on that. Really? Uh, well, it was a couple years ago. We had another private event where the Foo Fighters played. Foo Fighters? Yeah. We're there. Dave Grohl was on the bar, actually, walking along the bar playing guitar. That is fantastic. And he actually went up into the loft and was walking on the ledge in the loft, and I was like, that guy's crazy. He's yeah. going to hurt himself. And like three yeah. months later, he f d fell off the fell, stage. Fell off the stage. Right. Or whatever. So. It's nice to know that we've used the restroom at the same restroom that... Uh, <laughs> that's how I have to think about these things. Like, oh, like... I've, Mick I've, was there. Mick was here. <laughs> I've said, no, listen. I think I actually said Keith Richards was here, and there was no sign. That, that's some pretty big stuff. Yeah. When, when artists come by, do they want to be left alone? Because we're out there going, hey, come over, everybody come back and say hi to us. But People are different, you know. Really? Artists are not all the same. Some of yeah. them are really interested in talking to people, and others really don't want to talk to anybody, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I tend to stay hang back, you know, um, uh, and see what that's happens. That's why you're the president. I wouldn't be. I would be on them like a... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, well, I remember, I remember when Burt Bacharach played oh, with man. Elvis Costello. Yes. And I got, so you invited me backstage somehow, and I, was, I hung out with Elvis Costello backstage, yeah. and he was just the 
chattiest, talkiest guy. He talked about Diana Krall, his wife, and yeah. it was the coolest thing ever. And Russ. Russ was there. Yeah, Russ was there. I got to walk around with all this, uh, walk around the venue. He was interested in all the poster art that Scrojo does, our, our poster artist. And so we walked through, and he was looking at all Elvis the, uh, Costello. Was, yeah, me and Elvis were just looking. And he's looking me and at, Elvis. How many times did you get to say that? Looking at the Tom Jones poster going, oh, Tom Jones played here, you know? And I was like, it's, yeah. yeah it's con- I want to talk about the Count of the Belly. Up hey, before we go on, I do want to bring up to the bar someone um, as a surprise to the audience and a surprise to you. Okay. Um, from 1983, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne, come oh, over to the no bar. No, it's not. Come it's actually, the bar. it's Lee Jingler. <laughs> <laughs> you know who it is. It's not Ozzy Osbourne. No, this it's not. Is... Let me tell you who it is. Can you show the picture of who I really think it is? Jared knows who I think it is. <laughs> can, you, can I bring you back to a gentler time again? Hold on a second. Let's do this. The year was 1972. When Leaf Garrett hit the scene. <laughs> hey, hey. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Solak, Russ T. Nails, his son, is part yeah. of our crew here. Oh, nice. Hello, everybody. Great to see you. Otherwise, how did you? I judge a little bit in the did morning, you? yeah. You're like, you're like 5'10", but now you're like 6 foot when you, yeah. when you <laughs> blow dry. Yeah, bro. Bring it back to the 80s, baby. <laughs> I'm not sure you did. I think you put it back a ways. Hey, all right. <laughs> you guys remember Lee Jingler? At Christmas? Yeah, baby. On the air, yeah. on the air. Close to robe status. You know what robe yeah. status is, don't you? I'll get a robe. When you get ten times on the air, you get an on the air robe. Oh, like, robe. like I think. How many times have you been on? Come on. Sounds a little. Uh, You've been more than ten. Oh, come on. see, maybe he gets maybe. like maybe he gets a scepter or something. I think, uh, I think you're at eight. You're at eight. Yeah. Really? No. So we're not so talking about. Back to the not talking place? about a like national show. Oh, now okay. we're talking about on the air. Oh, okay. And Chris has got to be. You're oh. you're climbing up there too. Like, if you include like all the six. Zoom videos, what about Zoom videos? Zoom oh, yeah, he's like a them. dozen, Those count. right? Yes. The only person with a robe so far is Shotgun Tom. Ooh. Yeah. But it's a, it's, it's a really great robe, like the kind that you buy in the back of Parade magazine. Or you steal from the hotel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Exactly right. It says on the air on it. It says the Tommy show on it. Like, <laughs> okay. uh, do you get any more, do you get any more Sully show sightings? Um, everywhere I go, so I, I got I got an email. I got a text for you the other day. Yeah, well, we should show that one day. Yeah, we should. <laughs> but wait a minute, let's go. Every back time to... Tommy has somebody come up to him and say, "Oh my gosh, I love watching you on the Sully Show." He goes, "I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm on a show called On the Air <laughs> with Sully and Little Tommy," and he says it just like that every time. <laughs> it's not the little. It's not the Sully Show. It's On the Air That's with fun. Little Tommy and Sully. On the Air with Sully and Little Tommy. But you want to change it? But. Okay. Let's go back to Emily Green. All right, very good. <laughs> Emily. You tell how it grinds on him. <laughs> okay, this is, I mean, I'm reading your bio. You're in Rio, Rio de Janeiro, uh, the South Pacific, Melbourne, England, um, Taiwan. I mean, that's incredible that you travel all over the world. Is there like a favorite place that you have out of all these places around the world? Other than this studio uh, right now? <laughs> other, than this, other than San Diego. Yeah, that's, it's such a challenging question. Um, I guess it really depends on the event and that experience that I had because often when you're competing, you're mostly in the swimming pool or at the hotel or traveling in between. So I would say London was definitely a highlight for me in the Paralympics in London. My 90-year-old grandfather flew from South Africa to see me. Oh. So that was very special. Um, Beijing was also just mind-blowing because we had the audiences and the the Chinese crowd was just so passionate and supportive of everyone. Um, And that was my first Paralympics. And then in Rio as well, it was my last Paralympics. So it was also an emotional kind of closing and my dad was there with me. So, yeah, highlights around. Alex, I want you to tell a story about uh, the video that we're, I think we're going to see a little piece of this here, but that was a pretty special day. In your life, after uh, after your uh, I call it accident, I guess I should call it. Yeah. Um, 
Talk about the tell, set the stage and where you were and what you were doing, and then and then how this all came about. Yes. Yeah, so we were. It's so funny because setting it up, um, CAF called my mom and we're on our way to a doctor's appointment, and my doctor's appointment were about an hour and a half away, and very much like if I'm in the car, I'm sleeping, and so I'm knocked out. We're going down. I think we're like passing Lake Elsinore, and, and you're heading south or north, north or north. So you're heading from Temecula going up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And. I'm knocked out and I feel the car like stop and I wake up and we're in a parking lot and my mom's like outside on the phone crying. And you've been abducted. Yeah, and I'm point. like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, like somebody died, my grandpa's dead, my dad's dead, somebody's dead. And she comes back in the car and she's crying and I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, like it's all good, like everything's, everything's good, these are happy tears. And I'm like, weird time to have happy tears, but like what's, what's Off happening? Off the side of the 15. Exactly, and she's like, I can't say anything. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. We just spent six weeks, day and night, sleeping side by side in a hospital room. I think we're close enough to where we're not keeping secrets right. from each other anymore. Right. And she's like, I really can't tell you. And I'm just grinding her, like, come on, please, like tell me, tell me yeah, yeah. eight secrets. And she's like, I can't, like I swore I would not say anything. So I'm like, okay, so a couple months later, I forget about it and she goes, Hey, we're going to the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Like, there's this flag football event that CAF is putting on. Like, there's uh, a flag football event. Uh, it was actually at the polo fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Drew Brees has the call that, that Alex's mom got was from me, basically saying, "Hey, heard about what happened to Alex, and just talked to your process, Peter Harsh, and would love to potentially surprise Alex by having Drew Brees give him a running leg." And Drew Brees. Drew the Brew Drew, yeah. Drew Brees. So. She started crying, and I said, what's wrong? She goes, my son's biggest hero is Drew Brees. He's really? got quotes on the Charger wall. Charger Drew Brees or yes, Saints Drew Brees? Saints. Okay. Quotes on the wall, photos. There's a difference. Okay. Okay. Can you tell him a little bitter about the Chargers? <laughs> so he, was, he related to Drew because Drew was considered too short to be a quarterback. Mm -hmm. and Alex was considered too short to be a quarterback, and he proved people wrong. And so then we had Drew surprise Alex with his running leg at the polo fields. And the best part so was... So you're at this flag football thing just yeah. to make yeah, an he's appearance. He's basically in told, sitting yeah. in a wheelchair. And so oh, yeah, you're pretty happy that day. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm trying to like wheel on grass. It's not fun. <laughs> you're watching people play football. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like little kids. And there, there well, it is. when we first showed up, there it is, yeah. I noticed there was like a whole bunch of news crew vans. <laughs> and I'm wondering like, why is like these news crews are covering children's flag football like I was so confused uh -huh. and I didn't even like put two and two together that you know Drew lives near there like something could be going on <laughs> or like that's his like flag football uh, league and so then they like called me out and I'm giving like this awkward wave to like these little kids just sitting like crisscross applesauce all around me mm -hmm. and then Bob's like there's somebody here that wants to present you with something and then at that moment it all clicked and you see wow. it in my face I kind of just like stopped and I was like Oh no, I'm not prepared for all this. Like, yeah. does my hair look okay? <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't plan my outfit correctly. And then you can tell that's a thing with him. Yeah, 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 a, yeah. That yeah. thing's breaking right and left perfectly. <laughs> that looks like trestles right there, doesn't it, Rick? <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. So then he walked out, and then obviously, goes, I'm mic yeah, I'm mic'd up, and I'm like, okay, for one, don't swear, and secondly. <laughs> I say that every day. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, don't swear, and then like shook his hand, and we just started talking, and then all the nerves went away, and I was like, oh, you're, you're that's just, Drew Brees. Yeah, you're just a normal guy. And then he says to Drew, he goes to me, he says, do you think Drew would run some pass pattern for me? And then he's Did throwing, you it from the he gets out of his wheelchair with, with on the, crutches and throwing passes to Drew Brees. Alex <laughs> <laughs> Brees. Well done. All right. On the air continues. Sydney, um, Sydney Cerrone from Echo Smith, of course, is in the audience. Give her a hand. That song, 
Can you throw, can you put that put that Spotify thing back up there, Jared? If you would, our Emmy award-winning director, Jared Coleman. How many? What does that say? Five. That's a half a billion. A half a billion downloads. How old were you when you wrote that song? Come on. Hey. You can't be shy with a half a billion downloads. I was. Oh yeah. I was like 15 when we wrote it, I think. And when when you recorded it? Uh, when I was 16. So way later. Yeah. I was so mature by then, for sure. <laughs> She's 65 years old this year. That was an old song. It's, a, it's on classic rock now. Uh, big welcome to uh, Cameron Quissing and, of course, Sydney Cerrone. I just got lucky. They were in town. Did you like how they did that without rehearsing? That was great. No, I told them on the break. Do it again. Just do it one more time. Just do it. Bust it. <laughs> That's pretty good. So really good they played one. it one other time because Sydney came up with us one time at the Belly Up and played and, and played Cool Kids with us. Yeah. Um, and of course, it's always funny when, when we're, we hang out with Sydney and Cameron if they're, if there's like kids around in their 20s and Sydney picks up a guitar and I and we always coax her into playing stuff. The look on their face like, oh, that's on my playlist, man. We got a that's, guitar. No. <laughs> <laughs> we got a guitar. We got a guitar. Yeah. yeah, it is. Anyway, thanks for coming in. Uh, I got I to gotta say to you, um, super excited about the, the sound. Yeah. Who's coming up with the sound and who's coming up with the belly up? Um, well, at the sound, we have uh, Colin Hay from Men at Work coming. Love that guy. Uh, oh, we've got wow. this soul. When's out. that? That's uh, April 7th. He's the best storyteller ever. It's a great show, yeah. yeah. And it's one that sort of was at the belly up and has grown to the point where it needs a bigger venue now. So uh, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, and at the belly up, I mean, we have Ace Freely from Kiss playing on what? Monday. Yeah. And Carl Denson uh, is tonight, uh, Saturday, the, uh, the 25th anniversary of his tiny universe. Uh, wow. show and uh, Carl Denson also plays in the Rolling Stones so it's just sort of full circle there wow. he's the sax player uh, and was there that took night. Bobby Key's place yeah he did wow yeah so those are a couple things going on April 7th we got a big show there yes. at the belly up for Challenge Athletes Foundation Team Chase uh, of course Aqua Dolls will be opening up for us and then we're opening up for base I don't know if we're opening we have a happy hour show and who's after that night Pinback Pinback that's a big name too Damn. Emily belly up. Emily Gray what's, what's going on with you so, yeah, I moved to San Diego only a few, four months ago, so I'm really just exploring San Diego and doing a lot of surfing, trying to surf every day. Where do you so, surf? Dama. Yeah, 15th yeah. Street. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Right. And she'll be on a relay team with us. Exactly. Right, April 1st, Oceanside 70.3, Operation Rebound, huge fundraiser for CAF. That's a, that's a half Ironman. It's a half Ironman, so you've already committed to the no, bike. No, Tommy's not committed to anything. swim. <laughs> and, uh, sold all Emily my bikes. Old, yeah, we'll work. Yeah, yeah, you sold all your bikes. No, I'm just a check rider now. I I'm, like it. Uh, yeah, that's that's a new sport, by the way. Well, you, when you get a certain hard age. To, hard to pull a muscle yeah, or anything. Your, how's your uh, fingers? Uh, yeah, it's good. It's a, uh, yeah, see? You know, I might need a do online. Yeah, I might need a sling for my phone. I just want to say, Emily, I became a big fan of yours, and I'm just happy you're here. And thank you. Uh, Thanks thank for coming you in so today, Emily. Emily Gray. Thank you, Bob Babbitt. Yeah, so we got the 70.3 Oceanside. When is up. that? When is that it's, coming? It's uh, April 1st. April, April 1st, right. and we're very, very excited. Your trophy. Oh yeah, here's your trophy. Sorry. Oh, thank you, but I was going to keep it for the at the end there. You know, because it's a lifetime achievement. I appreciate that. And if anybody deserves lifetime achievement, it's you. Honestly, goodness. I mean, for what you've done for the for the challenge community, oh, you know, even the endurance athlete community. I've known you for gosh, 30 years now, and and uh, how big are you? We've got to. That was a T-shirt. I was a taco shy of about uh, 400 pounds. pounds. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he's, yeah. We anyway. created a Clydesdale division. That's exactly right. I'm really too big to compete with these little guys. Yeah. I need to have a bigger division. Yeah. I'm Clydesdale. not even in that division anymore. Yeah, I know. You move past. I'm in the medium T-shirt division. You are, you are like. Yeah. I think that's a small. <laughs> might be stretching. By the way. <laughs> might be stretching. And, uh, and our social media, our social media this morning is blowing up, and they have a lot of questions. For Alex, yeah, Alex. A lot of people are saying, "What hair product do you?" Ah, use? You yeah, go. really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're gonna get a deal out of this, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. So my my sister. Uh, oh, he's telling us. <laughs> and uh, so did your sister do your hair this morning? No, 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 no. I do my own hair, but she cuts my hair. She, I pretty much I sit down in her chair and I said, "Do whatever you want." Is hair a big thing for you? It is. Yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, because it. hey, well, it's not for us. Yeah. You gotta work it while you got it. Um, so it's, it's called the Veda. That's that's the brand. Wow. I use a, a Veda Pace. Expensive. So if anybody wants to know. Um, <laughs> at Aveda that's Pace. I, that's what yeah. I used to. That, was that a, a shameless plug? Uh, I want you to tell me about the uh, Swim with Mike Foundation. Yeah, so I'm getting ready to graduate from USC. I've been fortunate, blessed. Um, and Swim with Mike, they are a foundation 
that was started uh, by a guy named Mike that got paralyzed. Uh, he was on the USC swim team, and they kind of kicked it off, was just looking to help him get a van and uh, finish school. Sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, No, really, it sounds familiar. That's how yeah, CAF like started. Yeah. Some guy needed a van. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so they kind of just, it's been over about 30, 30 years, yes. I want to say. Yeah, 30 years. And so right now they just help put kids through college that have been uh, physically injured. And, I mean, you're talking USC, it's almost $70,000 a year. Three uh, years. And I remember going to my first event at our, our Galen Center, which is our basketball arena, and my mom and I are walking down the street, and it's our, my first time at USC. Never imagined applying there. And she looked at me and she goes, I hope there, I hope you know there's not a chance in hell that you're going here. Mm -hmm. And look at I you, could, four years yeah, later. Four years later and I'm here. Um, Swim with Mike Foundation. All right, let's give it up for our live audience today. Well, our live audience. audience. Yeah. Chris Goldsmith, Emily Gray, Alex Ruiz, and Bob Babbitt. Thank you, Kelly. Not to mention Sid and Cam. Thanks for coming.